Hello again and welcome. So after posting part two, a viewer had commented how they had purchased a brand new 121 GW a couple of months ago and their meter was newer than what these two are that I just purchased. So I purchased both of these production meter from Dave's EEV blog store. So my thought was that if I purchased it directly from Dave, the guy who worked with UEI to develop the meter, I would actually get the latest hardware. So basically what's happened is I've spent $600 on old stock. Unfortunately, on Dave's site, it never notified me that these were old stock meters. Now, I have seen where Dave's posted that basically it doesn't really matter from a functional standpoint. Of course, when you're doing a review like this and we're really diving into the details of the meters, it's going to make a difference. And the other thing you have to look at is they're not revising the hardware for the fun of it. There's a reason to do that. And normally you do that to improve the performance of the product or you're trying to reduce the cost, something like that. You're just not doing it for the fun of it though. So there's a reason that they're making these modifications. And again, it just so happens that the new meter is modified in that same area around that multiplexer that we were discussing in part two. I had made a post requesting ideas on how to proceed with these tests and somebody had sent me a private message basically saying I should cut my losses and sell off the two 121s. You know, and I'm not really opposed to cutting my losses. I can't see selling the meters, though. I basically view these as a novelty and nothing more. To me, they have the quality of like a SEM meter, for example, where basically when you buy a meter, it's kind of a grab bag as far as what you actually are purchasing. This meter is basically like that. So you kind of get that level of quality, but you get this EV brand on it. And of course, if you watched part one, you saw where I turned on the brand new meter. I was trying to measure a one mega ohm resistor and the meter just basically continuously hunted. I'm attributing that problem to the switch. After I've cycled the switch a few times, the meter has never done that again. And it's also more accurate now in the resistance modes. Typically, the people I know that are buying a handheld meter are actually buying them to put them into service. They're really not after the novelty aspect. Maybe if you're a bit of a computer buff and you like reflashing your computers, you could basically spend all your time just programming in different versions of firmware and running tests on the meter. You know, so if that's what you want to do, this would be a very good meter for you. So as far as how to proceed, you can see I have several meters out. I thought what we'd do, because one of the main concerns was measuring the capacitance. Here I have that same one nanofarad capacitor that I used to shunt the meter originally. So here I have my BK Precision. This is an RLC meter. I'm just going to install this so it looks like 991, 992 picofarads. So again, I'm just going to take the same capacitor, install it in this little adapter here so we can easily attach it to the various meters. Then we don't have to be concerned as far as the lead positions. This is my Fluke 187. Again, you can see it's 1.001. This is the Yokogawa TY720. Looks like 1.004, sorry about the glare. So it looks like 992. Interesting is that it's basically dead on with the BK. This is the Gossin Metrowatt MetroHit Ultra. You can see we can't zero this out. It's already reading zero, let's see what we get. Again, pretty close. This is the Bryman BM869S. Of course, it cannot resolve down to a picofarad. You can see it reads 1.00. This is the All Sun EM135. You can see this is an automotive type meter. Unfortunately, again, it cannot resolve down to a picofarad. Let's just have a look. Looks like 1.04. This is the SEM model DT9939. Again, I picked this meter up for $120 or something on sale. This is by far the worst one so far, so 942. This is made by Owan, it's the B41T. Not one of my favorite meters. This meter has a lot of issues. Looks like 987, maybe 88, call it 988. This is our little cheap Anig pocket meter. This is sold under Kasuntest. This is the ZT102. These meters were something like $15, $20. This one has been highly modified. Unfortunately, this meter does not have a relative mode. Looks like 79 picofarads. And let's try it with our capacitor. 
it gives us a reading of 1.022 so not one of the tighter meters but again this meter has extensive modifications now let's have a look at the 121 GW again from our 157 and again we can't zero it out because it's basically already reading zero and let's see what we read so 983 I'm starting to wonder if the meter is ever going to stabilize again let's just go ahead and remove it and let's just reinstall our capacitor 975, 976, so it's not the fact that we're installing it, it's just drifting. Let's just compare that with the Fluke 189. Again, we'll zero it out. So while we're letting this sit, let's just go over our data. Again, this is the 121GW at 0.983, the ZT102 at 0.1022. We got the B41T, again, very close to the 121GW. Then we have our low cost SEM meter at 942, the EM135 automotive meter, 1.04. That's definitely a ways out. The rest of these are all fairly close. Again, the Bryman BM869S is 1.00. The Gossam Metro Ultra was 1.010, the Unity UT181A, 0.992, the Yokogawa TY720, 1.004, the Fluke 187, 1.001, the 189, 1.002, and again my BK Precision RLC meter was 992. And it looks like for the high side, the EM135 is the worst. If you watch the videos for this, uh, I place this thing next to my ignition tester and this meter was continuously resetting. So I had the meter apart and I started going through the design and when I was looking over one of the data sheets, I had noticed that they did not follow the recommended practice. So I made a very slight modification to this meter. It didn't completely stop the resetting, but it was a definite improvement. So I don't know how that's affected these lower measurements like this. If I stop moving my hands near it, you can see that this has an effect on the readings. You'd kind of expect that with the stray capacitance of my body. But you can see it looks like it's drifted maybe one or two picofarads. Nothing like our 121 GW. Now I've left this meter on. Let's just see where it's at now. So 973. Yeah, so exactly 10 picofarads adrift from where it started. Again, just to be clear, one way to improve that is to basically add a parallel capacitance with the one that you're trying to measure, just enough to essentially get this thing to read off at the zero point, then go ahead and null out the meter, then add the capacitor that you want to measure. All right, you can see this is the production one meter. What I'd like to show you is I turned this thing on earlier in the day to run this same test, and what ended up happening is when I first turned it on, the capacitance actually showed a value. So you could actually null out the meter. I tried uh, turning it back off and on, and it went right back to zero. So I let it sit about 15 minutes. Sure enough, it showed an offset again. So it's been off now for, it looks like about four hours. So I'm gonna turn it on, and I wanna see if this thing actually shows that same offset again. So here we go. Sure enough, look at that. So now, if you hit rel, and if I were to install my capacitor, you see that thing's just drifting like crazy. There you go, so 998. Of course, what's gonna happen, you can see it's already at minus seven. Again, that's because we nulled the meter. Let's just let it sit here for a second. Again, this is production number two. Let's just try the same thing with this meter. Again, this has been off for the same amount of time. Just a small amount of offset. 
and then you can see it's truncated at zero. I suspect, yeah, unfortunately it's not gonna do it. See how this one's clocking negative? You'll notice production one is actually stabilized. You can see even if we reset the meter, it's just gonna come up zeroed out again. Now let's install our one nanofarad capacitor. There you go, 961. So again, the original meter was 983, basically using the same method, same capacitor. Again, I haven't looked at the manual to see if this is actually in spec or not. I assume that it is, even with the drift included. Actually, this isn't a reference standard anyway. But we can see, you know, again, compared to our B and K, the capacitor is fairly close. And it definitely tracks our two fluke meters. Same thing with the Yokogawa, the 181. They're all fairly close. Even our Gauss and Ultra is fairly close. But you can see that the accuracy suffers once we start getting into these lower cost meters. I do have this one additional Fluke 189. We can run the same test with it just for the fun of it. Again, I'll zero this thing out. Same capacitor. There you go. 1.002 again. So all three Fluke meters basically reading within a couple of counts. Currently, all these meters are attached in series. They're attached to my bench power supply, and they're all set to their amps range. You can see we're outputting roughly 362 milliamps. All the meters are reading roughly the same value. You can see our Gauss and Metrowatt is the highest resolution meter I have next to the 121GWs. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and increase the current. And here you can see we're putting out roughly 3 amps. You can see we're at roughly 6 amps. Looks like all the meters are tracking fairly close. I've changed all the meters over to using their milliamp jack, except for the 121GW which has the low burden mode. So in that case I've left it in the amps jack. You can see we're putting out roughly 188 milliamps right now. All the meters are reading fairly close. Again, here you can see I'm using the amps jack and not the milliamp jack. You can see I've adjusted the current down to 3.55 milliamps. For the 121GWs, I still have the current running through the amps jack and not the milliamp. Alright, you can see we're now putting out roughly 1 milliamp. All the meters except the 121GWs are placed in their microamp ranges and you'll see that's because basically these are going to overrange if I change them to their microamp ranges so let's go ahead and we'll take the current down a little lower and here you can see we're putting out roughly 500 microamps Again, all the meters are reading basically the same value. Let's take it down a little lower. You can see I'm now putting out roughly 50 microamps. All the meters are very stable. Currently I have 5 microamps being applied. And you can see all the meters are fairly stable. And they're all basically reading the same value. 
it should be roughly 500 nanoamps you can see both flukes are reading quite a bit higher than the other meters So all in all, it looks like the two 121GWs are behaving just fine. So here I have our tape eraser. Let's just see how this affects the meters while we're reading down this low. Now again, this Gossin Metrowatt has a fair bit of shielding that I've gone ahead and added to this meter. I've been told that Gossin has actually implemented a shield now in the production meter. I have not verified that. Well, look at the 121's moving around. Even back here. I mean, I'm quite a ways away from those right now. Let's see if I bring it right up on them. Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. Maybe the 181. Let me just put it right on top of it. There you go. Let me try the same thing with our Gossin. Yeah, it's definitely having an effect on that Unity. Again, nothing with the Bryman. Nothing at all with our Flukes. Same thing with the Yokogawa. Uh, the SEM has some effect. Again, I got to be right on top of it. There you go. You can see that thing moving around a fair amount. And let's try our let's try our Owan. Uh, some effect. It's moving around a couple of digits. Alright, so all these meters are connected in parallel right now, and they're attached to my Fluke standard. You can see we're putting out 10 volts. Looks like all the meters are pretty much spot on, and this is with 1 volt applied. Now again, I don't have a buffer on the output of that Fluke reference. So you can see these meters are loading it down a little bit. You can see I've changed our fluke standard to put out one millivolt. All the meters are still set to their voltage settings. Let's try changing these over to millivolts. Now, of course, the Gossin Metrowatt, this is a 300,000 count meter. It doesn't normally switch into the lower range automatically. So what you have to do is just go ahead and push the manual mode. There you go. So 1.013 or so. There you go. You can see it's definitely moving around that LSB. So it is having some effect on it. Now, of course, the Bryman BM869S also has a higher resolution we just select the 500,000 count res and you can see we gain that extra digit and again let's try our tape eraser on it I'm right on top of that thing let's try rotating it yeah you can see it's basically not having any effect but again Here's the 121s. Alright, so off to my left you can see I have our high voltage power supply out. It's currently attached to all the meters. Let's go ahead and we'll turn up the voltage a little bit. 
Again, this is a DC voltage. You can see we're putting out roughly 150 volts right now. All the meters are basically reading the same value. Both the 121 GWs are now beeping. That's because we've exceeded 600 volts. The Gossett Metrowatt is also beeping. I'm not sure if the Brahmin is or not. Well, I don't believe so. And you can see right here's where the Gossett is going to shut down at. Tell you what, let's just go ahead and we'll remove that meter for now. Alright, so I've just removed our Goss and Metrowatt for now. Let's go ahead and we'll take the voltage back on up. So it looks like the 121 stopped reading at 660 or so volts. Just for fun, let's just go ahead and take them up to a thousand volts. I'm sure I did that with a prototype. So there is the top end of my power supply so just a little over 980 volts all right so i've restrapped our power supply it's currently putting out 60 hertz and you can see the gas and metrowatt is displaying the 60 hertz and it's currently an ac plus dc value of 543 volts if we look at the fluke you can see it's measuring an AC voltage of 543 and a DC voltage of 12.7. You can see the same thing with the Bryman, it's reading roughly 12.6 volts DC and 540 volts AC. Let's have a look at our 121GW. Both of these are in the DC mode and you can see they're both reading 0.1 volts or so. Let's go ahead and increase the DC voltage. can see we are currently at 36 volts on both meters looks like the 121's are reading still 0 volts you can see we're now outputting roughly 197.5 volts see the same thing on the fluke 197.6 again the AC voltage is 540 or so Again, our AC plus DC value is 576. Again, we're at 60 hertz. You can see the two 121s are still displaying zero volts. If you'd like to see the AC plus DC value on the Fluke, and let's select it as well on the Bryman. All right, so it looks like uh, 577, 577 and 576 let's just try changing the 121s to AC plus DC fairly close up oh, there it goes so 578 let's try the other one That's correct, so 577 or so. You can see all the meters basically reading the same. It's odd it cannot read that DC voltage. Let's just try it in AC. Uh, that is correct, I believe, right? 540 volts. Again, you see 540 on the Bryman. And let's go back to DC. That's pretty odd. I mean, it's basically got, you know, 100 and almost 200 volts of DC there. I mean, you can see we're now at 240 volts DC, and the meter still can't read. Let's just try biasing that negative. See if it does a better job. Huh. It does not appear to. I mean, here you go. So minus 207 volts or so, and it's still reading zero. So yeah, that's a bit of an odd problem. I would have expected these two meters to be able to handle this. Let's just try to manually range it and see if it'll come in. Oh! Right there you have it. So, if you manually bring the meter in to range, 
there you go higher range still it looks like it's just in auto mode let's switch back to auto can't pick it up again let's manually range to where it's able to read it now let's kick it to auto nope well let's try the other meter so you can see both meters are reading 236 235 I think these two meters jumping around as a result of them changing the filter time constants in the firmware. Let's go ahead and we'll try going to a positive voltage again. We'll just keep it in the same range. There you have it. So three hundred and thirty seven volts, three thirty seven. So all the meters basically reading the same value, of course. We're out of range on the Gauss and Metrowatt. So I've gone ahead and reprogrammed Production 2, which is the meter on the right, with the latest version of firmware. So we can see this now has 2.02. .02. Meter on the left is still 157. You can see the Bryman is reading roughly 500 volts AC and roughly 61 volts DC. Uh, it's Roughly the same with the Fluke, you can see it's 61 volts DC, 543 volts AC. Again, both 181s are set to read their DC voltages. And you can see the new firmware is still not picking up that 60 volts. Again, let's just go ahead and change the range. There you have it, so 60 volts or so, 61 volts that is correct and again the meter with the 157 firmware if we just change the range I'm expecting this is gonna start working again so right there you have it so 61 volts again let's go to AC plus DC and 540 volts Let's go ahead and change the fluke to AC plus DC. And we'll do the same thing with the BM869S. And we can see basically all the meters are reading the same value now. So it looks like upgrading to the latest firmware does not fix this particular problem with the production meter. Well, I'm pretty sure we're coming up on a half an hour. Again, my intention is to keep these videos somewhere around a half an hour each. One thing I'd like to point out is a lot of people in the very first video had mentioned how the latest firmware fixed a lot of the problems that I was seeing. Of course, you're watching one of the problems right now where I have a biased AC waveform and of course the auto range is not working and this is with the latest firmware installed on the meter on the right. Again, you can see it right here, 202. In part four, we'll continue to compare the two production meters with the various ones I have available. So stay tuned for part four. We'll see you then.